How did you manage to study 25 plus hours a week while working full time? Specific tips for the FAR exam. As a fellow CPA, do you feel like it was worth it? We're all paid the same with or without having a CPA license and I feel like it was a wasted effort. Ooh, this is hot. A little too hot. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. It's Heaven with Heaven's Adventure. If you guys are new here, I feel like I'm getting some new people tuning in that I hope you're tuning in to feel encouraged and inspired to take on the huge CPA exam and everything that it entails. And you may be feeling discouraged. Maybe you're studying now and you're feeling burnt out. You're struggling with having enough work while you're studying. I'm gonna touch on all those little topics throughout this video because my study process through the CPA exam was rough. <laughs> I did not have it easy. I struggled. I was working full time while I was studying. I failed three of the exams. I passed two of them with a 75, which is the lowest passing score that you can score, which is all thanks to the Lord on that. But you guys, I made it through. And I promise you, if I can make it through these exams, you can make it through these exams because I do not test well at all on normal accounting tests, let alone a standardized national accounting test. I also have severe test anxiety and I actually had a panic attack during one of my exams. I had to void my exam because I had to leave in the middle because I freaked out. This is my life, you guys. It was not an easy journey, but I'm here to inspire you guys. So thanks for tuning in. So that's a little bit of the tip of the iceberg of what I went through when I was studying for the CPA exams, but I did get licensed back in 2019. I started studying for the exams in January of 2018. It took me exactly 18 months to study for all of them, finally pass them all. I am aware that the CPA exams are formatted differently now. It is very different from when I had took it. And we'll touch on that here in a little bit, but the concept of studying for the CPA exam will be the same. It is extremely challenging. Task-based simulations are brutal. If you can pass those, you guys, I promise you're just gonna feel like an amazing person. You're gonna feel very knowledgeable. It just gives you a little bit of credibility behind your name. And I actually have an entire playlist on my channel of my CPA journey because I just brought you guys along with me, which was very difficult to do and very transparent. One of the keys to me passing the CPA exams, you guys, was definitely choosing Becker to study with. Now this video is sponsored from Becker, which is so exciting to me, but you guys can look back at my videos from 2018, 2019. I highly recommended Becker before they ever reached out to me. So don't feel like this is a commercial. I stand by them. Just a cool full circle thing. I just really supported them a lot because again, if I can pass these exams, there is some magic happening somewhere because I was such a bad test taker. You guys can laugh at how much of a throwback these books are because they look completely differently now. This was definitely from the 20, this is the 20, 18 version of the FAR exam. The Becker CPA prep, they definitely are aware of the CPA evolution. They were the first in the market to launch that for the CPA candidates to be prepared for the new format of the CPA exam that launched in October of last year, 2023. And now that you have to pick a discipline to focus on for your fourth CPA exam, you get to pick between three different disciplines. Becker allows you in the study program to do a 30 day trial for each of the different disciplines before you actually commit to one to decide which one you wanna focus on and actually be tested on. One thing I really appreciate that helped me a lot with the Becker CPA prep specifically was the task-based simulations. That was the hardest part for me on the exams. They're very complex, they're very detailed. It takes a lot of critical thinking to get through those task-based simulations, but Becker's, in my opinion, were kind of more challenging than the actual real CPA exam. So they really prepared you well. Now granted, you would not score super high on them and then you'd kind of feel discouraged, but when you get there to exam day and you see some of these task-based simulations, you're ready, you guys. You're prepared, you've seen this before, you don't freak out. They also have a skill builder where it lets you just see the exact solution to the task-based simulation so you can learn from them. You can also retake any of them as much as you want. It's super helpful on the task-based simulation specifically. Becker also still offers in-person classes if you're not somebody that can really do your own schedule, do online. That is a huge part of their program, but you can still do these in-person classes as well. One thing that I specifically really appreciate about Becker CPA prep are the, that the lectures are not super long. I had some coworkers with other programs at the same time when I was studying and some of their lectures that they had to listen to were like over an hour long about like consolidations or pension plans. That is too long to be that focused. Your brain is not fully engaged and Becker really focuses on like 10 to 20 minutes max for each video and it's very concise and snippets and you definitely still have your whole textbook that you can read through and get every single possible thing that could be on the exam. The lectures are more focused, more concentrated. And I really appreciated that with my learning style specifically. This is also a new thing that Becker's got going on, but this adapt to you concept for your practice test, they take the problems that you miss and the pro your weak areas while you're studying and they help you work on that during your practice test. So your practice test is gonna look different than someone else based on the problems that you're struggling with. And that's a really cool concept because when you get to 
exam day and it's a standardized test for everybody. Every exam is different, but that's a whole other thing. But it's a standardized test, not catered to you. You're gonna be more prepared on your weak areas because you're gonna have had more practice in those areas thanks to Becker's technology to keep track of where you're struggling. I would also probably recommend the Becker Pro Plan subscription because that gives you unlimited access to their material past the 18 month window that you usually have. And if you're like me and you're barely making it to get all four exams in the window and you're gonna need that study material further than that, then they let you have unlimited access during that time. Things in life happen, you guys. Things at work get busy. You're not gonna be on this perfect schedule. Having unlimited access to the material may be exactly what you need when it gets close to the wire at the end of your 18 month window. Also, that pro plan is being offered at 30% off right now. Just saying, limited time. <laughs> and you get five one-on-one -on -one success coach meetings to focus on different areas that you're really struggling with that can really be concentrated time on that. It also comes with a final review capstone course. So that's what I had to pay for with audit because I was struggling with audit and failed this exam three times. I got the final review, but I do think Becker is definitely top of the market on preparing you for the CPA exam. So again, you guys, I'm super excited to partner with them on this video to go through your questions because I fully support them as a company. It was so awesome when they reached out to me. But anyway, you guys, let's jump into all of your questions. I have each of them on a note card here. We have a lot to get through. I'm not gonna be able to give super detailed answers because we don't have time for that. This is gonna be a two hour video, but let's jump right into it. This person asked if I used any supplemental CPA prep courses like Ninja CPA. I did not. I stuck to Becker only. I did have to buy the additional final review for audit, like I said, but I did not do any of the other supplemental courses. You definitely can. That's an option out there, and especially in certain week areas. If you're like really struggling with FAR, or maybe you wanna do a supplemental thing, I feel like Becker was extremely comprehensive. It covered everything it needed to cover for the exams to prepare me for the actual exam day. And I had three different people ask me what my study method was, what was my day-to-day -day study look like, what was my study routine, and if I have any efficient study tips for the CPA exam. I definitely went through the textbook in order, watched the videos in order. I went through all the MCQs, those are multiple choice questions, and then the task-based simulations. I did them in order with my study program, but if I failed below a 50 on anything, I would redo it. To be completely honest with you guys I hardly ever scored above a 70 on anything with Becker so I ended up passing all the CPA exams 75 plus but I did not score above a 70 on the practice that they really prepare you well I'm telling you I could definitely tell the areas I was really struggling with or the some of the task-based simulations that I would just sigh I'd be like dreading I'm like oh gosh a pension plan that probably means I need to study more on pension plans so I'm less intimidated on the pension plan when I see it but practically speaking I did work full-time I woke up at 4 a.m. every day and studied for an hour and a half before going to work and then I studied for three hours each evening when I got home from work and then I was on some travel audits where I was in hotels for the week now that that was my best concentrated study time because I didn't have any friends, I had no distractions. We went to work, we went back to the hotel, I would get food delivered in and it was very efficient study time. But you guys, the biggest thing I can tell you is as a social extrovert, Enneagram 7, I am definitely a people person. I had to completely shut down my social life 100% while studying for these exams. That was the, definitely the hardest part of that whole journey. It was very isolating. I felt very alone for a year and a half. It was only for a time, it was only for a season, and I knew that, but it was very hard. I did take one weekend a month and do something fun with friends. So one weekend a month, I got out there, had some fun, but I was locked down on the weekends. I studied eight to 10 hours a day every Saturday and Sunday. Also between exams, if I actually took one of the exams, I would take three days off between before studying for the next one. I also am not a note card person. I didn't take any note cards and write any of those. I never did that in school. I never did that in college. I'm just not a note card person. I don't memorize things well ever. I definitely have to understand and learn the actual concepts. And Becker is big about acronyms and they'll tell you a lot of mnemonics to help you learn different things. I just had to actually learn the concept itself because mnemonics never helped me. That just doesn't, that's not how I really learned. But it is for a lot of people. So they definitely give you shortcuts on how to remember certain parts. I definitely took a lot of notes. Like in my textbooks. I definitely like highlighted a lot of things. I had a different like color coding system too. And I would skim almost the entire textbook before each exam. FAR is actually a bad example. If you go back and watch my taking the FAR exam video, 
I was only eight out of 10 units through studying, but my testing window was about to end. So I went ahead and took it on a whim and definitely was like, y'all, I failed that with like a 50. So I finished studying the other two units I didn't get to so I could retake the FAR exam like a month from then and ended up passing it with a 75. It was a miracle. So I think my biggest pointer on the study method was just being self-disciplined. I was on a very routine schedule and that's something I would recommend, but also if you're a more flexible person or you can adjust your hours or if you're not working full time, then you can work around those things but my schedule was very full and I do think my self-discipline helped me get there this next person said they're still waiting on their NTS to be issued I think that's like your notice to sit it's basically your um, approval to go sit for a CPA exam they're asking if they should go ahead and start studying I mean that depends if you feel like you're gonna be approved to sit and you gave everything that qualifies you to sit for the exam then sure enough yeah go ahead and start studying if you're kind of on the fence like I hope they approve me but I didn't really finish this one credit hour then maybe not because once you start studying your time clock kind of starts so that just depends on your personal situation and then I had two people ask me if I had any specific tips for the FAR exam y'all this is the most technical black and white exam of all four of them which again the CPA exams are different now we'll touch on that in a minute but FAR is still you guys are still gonna be taking FAR this is definitely your intermediate accounting exams in college all put into one like all six accounting classes you guys took this is the exam for that a lot of people think FAR is not necessarily easier but most understood because they are very right and wrong answers whereas some of the exams like audit there's a lot of gray area <laughs> A lot of controls testing that's not like a math problem that has a very distinct answer. I think for FAR, it just takes the time commitment. It just takes the patience with yourself. It takes giving yourself grace. If you're taking a little longer to get through a chapter, if you need to redo a chapter, I think FAR just takes a big chunk of time. Now also, I decided to take FAR last specifically because I had heard it was the hardest exam and I knew I was a bad test taker and I was gonna panic in the exams. And I wanted the best experience of my test. I wanted to have the most practice of taking the CPA exam so that by the time I got to FAR, I would understand how the exam works really well. And I do think that's part of the reason I was able to pass FAR. I am very thankful I took FAR last and not first. Was FAR really difficult? I do feel like I just answered that in a very long winded way of saying, yes, it was for me. <laughs> How did you manage to study 25 plus hours a week while working full time? And then how did you stay disciplined with a full time job? Again, I do feel like it was a self disciplined scheduled, no exceptions kind of mentality. I just had to turn off my social life, you guys, for an entire year and a half. It was very hard. I really don't think I could do that again, honestly. I also will say I moved to Nashville for my job and didn't have any friends locally. All my friends were long distance, so that kind of helped because then I could only reach them by phone, which is me choosing to reach them by phone versus them living near by. I also had roommates, but they were never home, so that helped as far as my study time or whatever. I also worked with a lot of people studying for the exam, and that kind of encouraged me as well. Like, we were all working full time. We were all studying. Several of them had families and spouses, and I was by myself, so I felt privileged on the fact that my time was my time. I didn't have to share it with anybody. How did you deal with your test anxiety? How did you recover after failing a part? And how did you cope with burnout? So test anxiety, you guys, this was a spiritual thing for me, honestly. This was something I prayed heavily about out and I do feel like the Lord brought me through but I also think the practice exams with Becker I treated them like real exams I would turn off my phone I would lock myself in my room for the full four hours and I would act like I was taking a real exam and I do think that mentality helped because I wouldn't allow myself to have distractions I didn't let myself literally get up from my chair because you're not allowed to in the exam besides when you have your little bathroom breaks between test lists so I treated the practice exams like a real exam and I think that helped a lot as well and also part of the CPA exam process is just learning the exam, like learning how you're tested, learning how the questions are worded. And I think the more exams you take, the easier it is to understand what's gonna be asked of you. And that may not make any sense, but my test anxiety got a whole lot better by the time I was on the second half of taking the exams, because I'd seen this before. I know what this is like. I know what it feels like to sit in a testing center for four hours straight, to get my fingerprint scanned before going to the bathroom. All of that would normally have given me anxiety, and it did at the beginning. I think taking the exams helped with that. How I recovered after failing, I don't think I coped really well. I do think it was a prayer journey for me with the Lord but also I took a lot of breaks if I failed I would take maybe a week off and just like do something fun that week um, I would really try and encourage myself I would talk to other people who have failed CPA exams and I think just taking the mental breaks is key I think taking a whole weekend off I think doing something that makes you happy spending time with family friends boyfriend girlfriend whatever it may be I think 
things that really inspire you, I think will help help you pick it up and keep going. That's also my answer for how did I cope with burnout. By the time I was on the end of like the 18 month mark when I was taking my last exams, y'all, I was so burned out. I was over it. But having the credits in my belt, having the past exams behind me, I knew I couldn't give up or take a break. Like every day counted. I also lived by this mentality that I told myself every night before bed, every day of studying is another day I don't have to. And that was something that kept me going, me personally. Every day I didn't want to study, but I did. That was another day closer to passing my exams. If I would have taken that day off, that'd be another day I have to study to make up for that time. But that saying really helped pull me through. And that's something I came up with myself every night in the shower when I had my deep thinking. I'd be like, all right, heaven, or another day closer to not having to go through this ever again. This person says, a fellow CPA, do you feel like it was worth it? We're all paid the same with or without having a CPA license. And I feel like it was a wasted effort. And then this person said, has your job directly rewarded your efforts to get licensed, whether that be through promotion or a raise? And this person said, if you don't go the public route, how long is it before you actually see the benefit for government? I mean, every job is going to be different, you guys. If you are working full time, then you should know ahead of time if your CPA exam is going to pay off, if they are going to promote you, if they're going to give you a raise. And maybe you're getting the CPA to leave that job and go somewhere else, and that's fine too. I do think it'll open up a whole lot of opportunities for you. It has for me. <laughs> Within the year of me getting my CPA, I had up to over a 20% pay raise. I was also promoted twice, but my specific situation where I work, they need a lot of CPAs and there are certain audits that you can't be on without a CPA as you're in charge. Therefore, us CPAs are being encouraged to in charge an audit even if we don't want to. Um, there are certain audit reports that I've had to sign that I had to be a part of because I have the CPA designation. I've also been asked to host different trainings in my workplace. I've been in on a lot of our staff interviews for new hires that come in. So I think the opportunities are prevalent, at least in my, my opinion, my experience. But I also work on financial audits and the CPA license is very much encouraged. They are definitely pushing us to take it. They pay for our exam materials. They pay for our actual test exam fees. They give us time on our timesheet to go take the exam. So it's heavily encouraged. That is not to say that's the case everywhere. If you work in accounts payable somewhere, they probably aren't gonna encourage you or pay you more to get your CPA because it's not really in the budget, but also you don't really need your CPA license to do that job duty necessarily, depending on where it's at. So I think the answer to that just depends on your personal experience or the place that you're wanting to work at. It's the same with like going back to school to get your master's degree or something. You're not just gonna do it to do it. You wanna know that it's gonna pay off or that your employer is gonna reward you for that or the next job you're looking at it is wanting a master's degree. That's kind of the same with the CPA exam. You can be an accountant your entire life and make good money and make a living without the CPA license. But in my case, I learned early on that getting my CPA opens up a ton of doors at where I work, gives me a whole lot more opportunity. And currently I make over double the salary of what I started making six years ago where I'm currently at. So that should tell you all you need to know about if I feel like the CPA was worth it working in the government sector. This person wanted me to touch on the old score release schedule because that is what the CPA exams are going towards again in 2024 this year. Back when I took the exams, you guys, you had four testing windows and you could only take each exam once during that testing window. So if you took it January 2nd, you're not gonna get your score release until after April. Like it was months that you had to wait because you had to go into that, that next quarter before you would get your exam release. And then also you didn't know if you passed, if you needed to retake it. So there was twice that I took an exam early in the window and then would have no idea if I failed or passed and then I would move on to another exam and study it and then I would get my test results and I actually failed that's when I failed audit but I had already studied for reg so I took reg and then again I had to wait like two months to get my reg results back so then I restudied for audit and then I realized I passed reg now I'm back on audit so that was tricky that was hard I do hate that they're going back to that score release schedule but I feel like the little window of people who took the CPA the past couple of years where you got your results back within a week I feel like that's a little too spoiled. I think you should really have to wait on it. <laughs> but that's what they're going to this year. I don't think it's the end of the world. That's what I dealt with. This person also asked the same question about how I feel about taking the exam in 2024, but then asked what discipline that I would choose. For those of you that are already CPAs and aren't aware of this, they now are going to require all the candidates to take FAR, audit, and regulation, but then you have three other 
optional, they're not optional because you have to pass one of them, but you have three other exams you can choose from. I had to literally look this up when I did my research, but you have one that's tax compliance and planning. So that would kind of be an extension of the reg exam. Like if you're a tax accountant CPA, then you're probably gonna wanna choose that route. Then you have business analysis and reporting, which is bar. I hate that they call it bar because that's gonna get confusing with the bar exam for lawyers. But that bar part would kind of be an extension of the FAR exam. Like if you're a bookkeeper, if you're a controller, if you're preparing financial statements, that would probably be the route that you would wanna focus on. Then you have information systems and controls, and that's kind of an extension of audit because it's all controls testing and learning all of that part, which is what you audit. So if I was to take the exam in 2024, I would probably focus on the information systems and controls just because I am an auditor. That's what I do every day. It would make the most sense. The last question I got was advice for students wanting to pursue accounting just to make money. In my personal opinion, you guys, it took every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears for me to get through my accounting degree. It was extremely challenging. It was very hard. So there is no way I could have went through that if I wasn't passionate about working in accounting. But you do have the super intelligent, really smart, high IQ kids that just kind of float through all their classes and make A's and everything, and they're not really passionate about it. So I guess that would be the question this person's asking about. But I don't know, I guess that's a personal opinion. If that's something, if you're willing to do a job day in and day out, 40 plus hours a week, every single week of your life, of something you don't love, just because you have a good salary, if that's important to you, if you want to go buy the big expensive things and make a lot of money, then that works for you. That's great. I personally could not do something that I didn't enjoy every day. It just takes up too, too much of my time. I'm such a time sensitive person. <sighs> oh my gosh, you guys, that was a lot of talking. I hope that you feel encouraged if you're thinking about studying for the CPA exams. You guys, I can't even tell you how many hundreds of people have reached out to me over the years thanking me for encouraging them to study for the CPA exams. You guys, I literally had a lady in her 70s write me a card, mail it to me, thanking me for encouraging her to go back and study for the CPA exams because she had failed them years and years ago. And then she got busy with family and kids and grandkids and everything. And then she went and tackled the CPA exams and got certified. And I, I cried when I read that. It was the sweetest thing I had ever read. I'm not helping you guys. I'm just here sharing my journey. I'm glad it inspires you, but you gotta want it for yourself. You've gotta put in the work. You've gotta put in the time. You've gotta get your brain ready. And it can feel very isolating, but just know that it is a season and push through, make it to the end. Don't give it up because then it was a wasted effort. But I definitely recommend a Becker CPA prep. I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring this video. I fully stand by them. I don't think I'd be able to pass the exams with any other CPA prep just based on what I know from other friends and other coworkers. I've studied for different things, just the way that I learn. Their CPA prep is very engaging. It's also very user friendly. And like I said, the practice tests are very similar to the real exams, like very similar. And if you treat them like the real exams, I think you'll be ready to tackle it. So I wish you guys all the best of luck. I am going to leave Becker CPA exam prep link down in the description so click on that they have a 30% off the pro plan currently and that's only for a limited time if you guys are interested to have the unlimited time to use their materials but thank you guys so much for tuning in if you have any additional questions I can type them back to you as answers but thank you for all of you that submitted questions to make this video possible and thank you so much Becker CPA for partnering with me so we can both just help inspire other people to get through this exam together so thank you guys so much and I'll catch you next time bye friends Bye. <laughs>